Welcome to Articulate. This is the Hasbro Marvel Legends Demo Goblin Wave Vulture. Vulture, aka Adrian Toomes, was created by writer Stan Lee and artist Steve Ditko in 1963's The Amazing Spider-Man No. 2. He was the second ever costume supervillain to face off against Spider-Man, eventually becoming a founding member of the Sinister Six. The classic Vulture design was only ever released once before in the Marvel Legends line in 2005's The Fearsome Foes of Spider-Man box set, one of the few figures from this grouping that's still highly sought after to this day. Out of the box, Vulture comes with four pieces to assemble his wings and an alternate helmeted head. In the comics, this helmet is worn by the second Vulture, Blackie Drago, but the face under the hood is just Tombs sporting a frown. To our knowledge, Tombs has never worn this style headgear, so this design choice seems extremely odd. Why not use Drago's likeness instead? The overall design evokes the classic Vulture costume, but doesn't quite match the iconic artwork from Ditko or Romita. Actually, it most closely resembles the art of Mark Brooks, specifically this image redrawn from the interior of Marvel Age Spider-Man No. 1. Funny enough, this image is used on the base of the Fearsome Foes box set, and the only reference image we could find of Tombs sporting liver spots. Vulture has 17 all-new sculpted pieces, which is about 21% higher than average for comic-based figures, but half as much as the last few classic Spider-Man villains like Scorpion, Mysterio, and Doc Ock. New pieces include both portraits, the feathered collar, wing sections, hands, and arms, including the pieces that didn't strictly need to be resculpted, biceps and elbows. Vulture stands six and a quarter inches tall, or 16 centimeters. He looks pretty decent standing next to his sinister sidekicks, Craven, Electro, Mysterio, Sandman, and Doc Ock. And of course, Spider-Man himself. Proportionally, he's seven and a half heads tall, which is a more heroic constitution than even Spider-Man. Otherwise, his hands are on the larger side and his tibia is longer than his femur. Unfortunately, that's inherent to this body. The heads characterize a man advancing in age fairly well, and stylistically matches the source material. The hood of the alternate head is the only new piece to get sculpted lines, but because this detailing is noticeably absent from the rest of the suit, it feels out of place. Beneath his head, the collar flows gracefully, but doesn't quite resemble actual feathers. The new slightly enlarged shoulders give Vulture a broader silhouette that improves upon the original proportions of the pizza spidey body less sunken into the ribcage. Hopefully Hasbro uses this variation for future releases. The wings get a sharp layered design that looks great from one side. The other just barely gets any definition between feathers, causing it to look like a big hunk of plastic instead of actual wings. Why attach the smaller wing sections to the shoulders instead of the upper arms? The way it's currently designed, the bicep swivel is essentially useless, unless you're okay with wings that look torn in half. Imagine you want Vulture to look like he's dive bombing, arms straight out. In reality, you're either stuck with this, or a compromised version like this. Just another odd choice. A variant or running change was recently released, where Vulture's wings attach to his shoulder and not his triceps. Right, I think? The muscles on the back? I don't know, cut this part out. This makes articulating the arms much easier. While secondary costumes from a video game released last year get dedicated sculpts, the iconic design of a beloved character that's been around for nearly 60 years gets half-baked. In our opinion, the budget needed to be moved around to accommodate a dedicated sculpt with vertical lines running throughout the costume, just like the helmeted head. Remakes are supposed to improve upon the original, not regress, earning a sculpt an average 5 out of 10. Of the 32 pieces that make up this figure, 14 have some sort of paint applied, which is almost 5% higher than your average comic-based figure, but not high enough to make a significant difference. 
The majority of this figure is of course cast in green, with his white collar hiding the fine line between suit and painted flesh. A stenciling of lighter green is sprayed onto the torso and upper arms to help suggest the lines that run throughout the comic costume, but only to the front of the upper body, and doesn't even try to continue past the ab joint. If Hasbro can't put the effort into sculpting this major aspect of the suit, they could have at least painted them on the entire body. While wing pieces are cast in a slightly lighter green than the rest of the body, the previously mentioned light green spray is applied across both sides of the larger wing sections, creating a clean gradient. The smaller sections seem to only get paint on one side, however. The heads get the most attention out of everything. The liver spots applied on the primary head are great and help make this interpretation of Vulture stand out from the rest. On both heads, eyebrows get a few bushy strokes of gray and the eye sockets a manic looking sunken pink spray. Eyes proper have golden brown irises with some black eye lining to make them pop. The primary head also sports off-white teeth framed by a light red mouth. Where the sculpt almost utterly fails, the deco at least tries, even if there's a bit left to be desired. It's the face that really sells everything, and with absolutely no color mismatching, especially impressive between the casted green pieces, deco earns an above average 6 out of 10. Mr. Toombs has 32 points of articulation, slightly above average for comic-based figures. His head attaches to his neck with a ball hinge, unhindered by the collar, and can look nearly straight up for flying poses. The shoulders attach the torso via butterfly joints, with less clearance than it actually appears. The shoulders fully rotate and hinge well above the 90 degree standard. While the bicep can technically swivel the full 360 degrees, it breaks up the sculpt of the wings, as mentioned before. The elbows are fully double jointed, but go too far and you'll create a gap in the wings. Hands attach the arm as hinge swivels with standard range. The ab crunch is less than preferable and a little stiff going backward. The waist swivel rotates the usual 360 degrees and the thighs attach the torso via ball and socket joints. The thigh cuts do their job, as do the double jointed knees. Unfortunately, there's no boot or ankle cut, but the foot is on a typical hinge swivel. Overall, it's a pretty standard articulation scheme, and while we miss the boot cut, it's not exactly necessary for flying characters like Vulture, earning a respectable 7 out of 10. Compared to the Vulture release 15 years ago, we can count on one hand what this new release actually does better. However, there's no question that this new Vulture fits perfectly with the modern style of Marvel Legends, especially if you hate those old-fashioned ball-jointed hips. Despite the lack of dedicated sculpt, the new pieces included in this figure will definitely benefit future releases. Furthermore, while Deco doesn't cover the entire figure, it's more thought than we usually get, and the range of motion is more than functional, earning Vulture a final score of 6 out of 10. Do you disagree with us? Did we miss anything? How will you improve the figure? Let us know in the comments. In our previous review, Mark Curtis wrote, I can't recollect this Luger being used before. As far as I know, it's a new sculpt. I like the previous Hasbro Doom one because of the painted handle, but this brand new one has a more accurate, thinner barrel. Mark, you're absolutely right. It's definitely new and feels a little less flimsy. I'm Glenn. I'm Eddie. And this is Articulated. I'm Glenn. I'm... Um...